knows my name. I can rest in his arms. He's always the same. When I fall, when I fall, Jesus takes my hand. Cleansing me, lifting me, he helps me to stand. Always the same, oh praise his name. Jesus never changes, he's always the same. Always together, his love is forever. Jesus never changes, he's always the same. In his love I'm secure, we shall never part. In his word I will trust and give him all my heart. In the dark of the night, when my heart would fear, lovingly, tenderly, my Savior is near. Always the same, oh praise his name. Jesus never changes, he's always the same. Always together, his love is forever. Jesus never changes, he's always the same. Amen. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Psalms 34, please. I would appreciate your prayers. I've been having a rough trot lately. and uh, I don't want to get hooked on endone. So I'm very choosy when I take that. I did take two Panadol before I left, hoping that would kick in and help me. As long as I got breath in me, though, and can move, I want to praise the Lord. Amen. Stand with me, please. We're going to read from Psalms 34 tonight. Psalms 34, great, great psalm in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, if we maybe, if you can think about how we used to sing that chorus, Brother Paul, maybe we could close with, uh, sure. with that chorus. Yeah. Psalms 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked upon him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamp around about them that uh, fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Let's bow for prayer. And our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Word of God. What a blessing it is to be able to hold your very words in our hands, to realize that you loved us so much that you gave us instructions and uh, directions and commandments and oracles and all the things that would make life much better for us, much happier. And tonight we want to honor you, Lord. We want to praise your holy name, even as we sung there in the seventh page of our songbook tonight. I pray thee that we might praise you, and Lord, that you would give us victory in our hearts, that we could walk a good walk, to sing a good song, to praise with heartfelt excitement as we think about what you've done for us. Bind the devil. Amen. Lord, I, I need you tonight. I need you to loose my tongue and illuminate my mind. I pray for liberty and, 
and unction. I pray for deliverance. And that, Lord, may the words that I'm going to share with the people tonight be a blessing. Lord, I pray for those who are not here. I pray for the Rigby family that have suffered sickness again. I pray for Carol who has suffered much. I pray for Brother John's going in the hospital this week for this examination. Lord, I just pray that you bless your people and meet our needs. And we'll thank you for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. There was a great man by the name of Curtis Hudson who was dying of cancer and he knew his days were numbered and he spoke one last time at the fellowship meeting for Southwide Baptist Fellowship and he sang a song I'm not going to try to sing it but he sang a song I'm on the winning side and you and I certainly are on the winning side now I do know this People who walk a path of victory live on a different plane than those who just live a mediocre life. The plane that I'm talking about is to be able to praise God in good times and bad. To be able to praise God when you're up on the mountaintop, but also to praise God when you're going through a valley. All of us have problems All of us have sorrow at one time or another. And I know that in life we tend or trend to look at the problems of life. But when we do, our our lens, our focus on the problem and not on God. God is victorious in all things. When we look at the world through our problems, then we don't focus on God. And we don't see God as the answer to our problems, our journey with the Lord. It's the most important journey that you'll ever make in your Christian life. Make the most of it. You're not going to go back. You can't return. If you fail God, get up. The Bible says a righteous man will fall seven times, but he gets up again. Don't let your problems become the focus point of your life. We can either choose to walk the path of praise or we can choose to walk on the main street with the mediocre Christian and just keep on barely keeping on. To be spiritual is a choice. And sometimes, if you're like me, now I I can say this uh, uh, out of authority, I don't always act spiritual. And I don't always make the spiritual choices that God wants uh, from uh, him to me. I do know this, that those who learn to walk in the spirit tower over those who walk the streets of mediocrity. And so I, I want God's best for you. I want the Lord to meet the need that you have. Now, here we read about praising God. We've sung about it. The verse that he sang in uh, chapter, uh, chapter, verse uh, one of that seventh verse about praising the Lord I thought man that goes good with my message for tonight now if praise is so important and it is why should we praise God for what reason should we look here I mean as an individual how do we praise God why should we praise God as a church how should we praise God and again why should we praise God well first of all I want us to look at this area of praising God personally. I cannot praise God for you. You cannot praise God for me. But we're both ordered, commanded, encouraged, reminded that we are to praise the Lord. Uh, Never mind what others are doing. When you leave this place tonight, don't go out of here and say, we praise God in church today if you didn't praise God. Uh, That is your responsibility. That's what the Lord wants from you. Now, the body collectively, we are to praise Him. But what about you? Are you praising the Lord? God isn't looking at us. He's looking at you. 
Now, I know as a church, we are to praise the Lord. We did it in song. We did it this morning. We did it tonight. We praise God through singing and through testifying and things of that nature. But you see, God is not looking at us. He's looking at you. And then he's looking at me. And so that's very, very important. Now, you can surround yourself by people who are praising the Lord. But are you exalting him? Has he got his place in your life? Now, when I'm talking about praising the Lord, I'm not talking about being foolish. Now, we've seen that. There's a whole lot of that going on. But I think sometimes as God's people, we, we withdraw ourselves from any emotions, from anything that has to do with expressing our feelings because of what we see about us. Now, you can be surrounded by people who are exalting the Lord, but if you're not exalting God, then you are robbing him of the glory that is rightly belonging to him. And he wants you to understand that. And, and there's a reason for that. I have my own mannerisms. Hazel has hers. Preacher has his. Brother John has his. But we're unique. And we're different. We're, we're, in some ways we're all alike. But in other ways we're all unique in our own way. <laughs> And you can, com uh, you can communicate your feelings toward God in a way that I will never be able to do it. But God wants you to praise him. He wants you to give him first place in his life. Again, I cannot do it for you. He wants to hear from us. And he wants to hear from us regularly. I've told you the story before how that I was having a spiritual battle one time and I'm in my office at 78 Caramba Street, Hazel, and uh, I think Hazel was upstairs, or I don't know where she was. She might have been gallivanting. But anyway, I, I, I was uh, in my office, and I'm, and I'm trying to praise God, and the, and the circumstances that I was going through at the time, which I don't even really remember what it was now, <laughs> but, but it was big to me at that time, and I needed victory. And I begin to pray and ask God for victory and claim the victory and give praise to God. And all of a sudden there was joy that overflowed in my heart. And, and I'm, I, I hope the doors were closed and the windows were shut because I began to praise the Lord and just laugh and shouted and, and glorified my God because I knew he had given me victory. Now only you can praise him in the way that you do it. Let's look at verse 1 for just a moment. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now the man that wrote this psalm is King David. And King David had an orchestra. He had a choir. Uh, and they, they had set up praise to the Lord. Uh, uh, but, but King David did not want the congregation to do his praising. And he did not want the congregation to praise him. And so God led him to give us this particular psalm, this particular verse, where that it personally he is praising the Lord. Now I want you to notice the word bless in verse 1. You know, how shall I put this and not be offensive? Most of us go to church seeking a blessing rather than to go to church and be a blessing yeah, that's right. and if you want to be blessed of God learn to be a blessing learn to reach out to others learn to express glory to God uh, in a way that that will touch people's lives now did you come looking for a blessing today or did you come to be a blessing now the truth of the matter is you can have both and God wants us to have both. And the, the more I get blessed is when I try to be a blessing to somebody else. And that's just the way God has worked it out. We are uh, involved in a society that uh, lives for self. You know, uh, you look at the ads concerning the grocery stores. You've got Kohl's, you've got Woolworths, and you've got Aldi's. And uh, they want you to do your business with them. You know, look at the fast food people. Every one of them wants your business. And, and so they promise to give you better service and a little bit more on your plate 
uh, if you'll come and be with them. Frank Sinatra uh, made a song famous when he said, I sang it, I did it my way. Well, I think it was um, Hungry Jacks that came out with an ad a few years ago about uh, do it your way. Well, you know, have it your way. That's what it was. Every bank, they're, they're clamoring for you to bank with them. <clears throat> and they say, if you come to our business, we'll take care of you. You just let us take care of your business. Of course, what they're really saying is you put your life savings in our bank. <clears throat> we'll loan it out and make more money than we'll ever give to you. But they're clamoring for your business. But now when we come through those doors and we come to church, uh, we should never come to church with the idea uh, of a consumer attitude. If, if anything, uh, we need to have a contributing attitude, a mentality that says, not me, but you. Uh, there was that, what do you call it when you get that, uh, you know, you get the letters and it, joy, J-O-Y, Jesus first, other second, yourself last. That's the way it ought to be. And that's the road to happiness. That's the road to joy. Choose to walk the path of praise. And then personally, if you do that, uh, you're going to take another step. We should praise the Lord verbally. Did you notice in our verse? He said uh, that he would praise the Lord where? In my mouth. I, um, <laughs> I watch people as they go to football games. <clears throat> They'll shout like screaming idiots at a football game. And they'll come to church and be like a wooden Indian. I, I, I got so excited Friday night when I watched the Cowboys and the Broncos. And, and I was actually screaming at the television set a couple of times. <laughs> I was so excited. Uh, Hazel had earphones on. She's trying to, you know, get into the uh, WhatsApp things. And, but, but man, I... Get in there. What's going on? Why was that called that way? You know, and I got all excited. And a lot of people are that way. But when they come to church, they don't sing. Or if they do sing, they only sing half-heartedly. I got a blessing this morning. I'm going to tell you about it. When I was leading singing this morning, I looked over at Rob, and he was involved. I mean, he was singing. And I appreciate that so much. That just blessed my heart because he's not always that way. Uh, and same way with when the preacher's preaching. You know, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying amen, but some would never say amen even if it's a good point in the message and they're blessed by it. But I'll tell you what, uh, verbally, you, you ought to praise the Lord. Now, I know somebody will come up with this idea. Well, I praise God in my heart. And what does that mean? Now, it seems to me that um, the Bible teaches us that if you're truly blessed in your heart, it's going to migrate north to your mouth. <laughs> and you're going to praise the Lord. I mean, I'm not saying you ought to, you know, do like some of us. Hey, man, you know, or, or uh, uh, I've been in meetings where people just jump up out of their seat and praise the Lord. I've been in that type of meeting. I enjoy it. And I've done that a few times myself. But there ought to be a little bit of excitement Amen. in our heart as we serve the Lord. Let me give you a verse from Hebrews 13, chapter 15, uh, chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is... The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Now, my wife knows that I love her. I tell her that often. Uh, she wants me to say it. But she not only wants me to say it, she wants me to show it. Yeah, sure. and, and the truth of the matter is, she already knows I love her. But it means so much more when I tell her I love her. I used to quote a guy that used to say, you know, when I proposed to my wife, I told her I love her. And, and if I ever change my mind, I'll let her know first of all. I used to say that, but it went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> and, and so I quit saying it. That wasn't good enough for Hazel. But, uh, uh, you know, even though I love her in my heart, she wants me to show it. 
to show it by my words, show it by my deeds, and show it by my life. And you say you love God. Well, God wants you to show it by your words, by your deeds, and by your life. And I promise you, it'll change your life. If you deliberately try to take steps in that direction, God wants that. He wants us to give him praise. That's what this whole psalm is about. And it is so good. Now, not only should we do it once in a while, but we ought to do it continually. There ought not to be a day go by that you can't thank God for something that he's done. This is the secret that will transform your life. It'll give you grace and glory and and, and, and it'll, it'll help you in good times and bad. It'll help you when you're up and when you're down. It'll help you when you've got problems in your life. And it'll help you when those problems are behind you. Because God is there. And, and, and some folks say, well, yeah, but I, I can't praise God when I'm down. It's not natural. Well, it's more difficult. I'll agree to that. But, you know, that, that, that's where we, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, sometimes when we're down, it's more important to praise God and give Him glory than when we're up. And you're right, it's not natural to praise God when you're down. It's supernatural. Yeah. And yet when we do that, God says, I'm pleased with that. And you'll be surprised. The biggest problems that we have seem to slide by the way when we praise God and keep on keeping on. Uh, there, listen, There is no faith in praising God when the battle is won. You praise God by faith when you're in the battle, when things are not going the way you like them to go, when things are not up but things are down. It's easy to praise God on the mountaintop. It's more difficult to praise the Lord in the valley. Uh, What's that old saying? Any old dead fish can float downstream, but it takes a live fish to swim upstream. And sometimes you're fighting the current. Sometimes you're fighting the issues of life. They go against you. Well, why should we praise God? Not only because he deserves it, which he does, but we ought to praise the Lord because uh, we need victory. The path of victory, (laughs) sometimes... Uh, is is hard. And praise doesn't come easy. But I promise you, if you can learn to praise the Lord under all circumstances, then you're on the path of victory that will come quicker across your bow than you could imagine. Uh, You know, there's only a few of us here tonight that are married. uh, But uh, have you ever had a marriage problem? Praising God can heal that. I've always loved my wife, but I haven't always liked her. Uh, There's been times when I get upset with her, and there's times that she gets upset with me. Anybody who says they've never had a problem in their marriage, they're they're lying. (laughs) It may be uh, concealed, you may be able to hide it, but we all have problems. Well, the path to victory for marriage is to praise God. How about health? When you're down in your health and things are going wrong, praise God. Finances. Finances is always a problem for everybody. Uh, You praise God when you have a financial problem. Or what about a work problem? Can you praise God when uh, your spirit is not right toward others? Well, you, you take this for a serious note. And you turn to God and you learn to praise God when things are good. And when things are bad, you'll find victory is awaiting you. I used to, do you remember when they used to have all the plaques that were in Christian homes? You know, you go in the kitchen and you see a plaque that he's the unseen guest at every meal. Uh, you know, and it talks about prayer. And it talks about, you know, the family prays together, stays together, and all these things. Well, I had a plaque. I had it in my office for years. I don't even know what happened to it. I, I lost it somehow. It wasn't very long, didn't have a whole lot to say. It just said, praise God anyhow. (laughs) Praise God anyhow. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be right. It doesn't have to be up. Just praise God anyhow. But why praise? I'll tell you why. Because your faith will be strengthened. When you praise God, 
You're reinforcing what God has already promised to give you. And you give God glory and you'll find that he's there to strengthen you in the battle. We all have battles, don't we? Well, verse 3 says to magnify. Magnify the Lord. That means to make him the center. Glorify him. Uh, it's, it's not always good. It's not always the way we uh, want it. Pastor spoke about Job this morning. I told him after the service I was going to put the cap on the message that he preached this morning. Because it isn't always good. But we find strength in serving the Lord. You know, when you magnify God, you put everything in perspective. And I'll tell you why. Because when you magnify God, you're looking at your problem, or I'm looking at my problem, from heaven's point of view. Amen. We're looking at it the way God works. And didn't preachers say God was sovereign? And that he didn't always work according to our schedule, but he always is working. He meets the needs that we have. Amen. It's no longer how big a problem that uh, is compared to me. But it becomes, this problem is small because it's compared to my God. And you know, that's so true. When the children of Israel went out of the land of Egypt, they went into the wilderness, and then uh, they were right at Kadesh Barnea, getting ready to go over into the promised land. And God told Moses, he used to take 12 spies and send those spies into the land and, and look at it. Well... Caleb and Joshua were two of the 12 uh, spies. Ten of them came back and said, you know, it is a land that's flowing with milk and honey, but it's a land of giants, and we're so small. That was ten of the report. Caleb and Joshua said, they're like grasshoppers, and our God can <laughs> smash them. Let's go on in and take the land. Well, the people believed the report of the ten. And so God turned them around and let them just wander for the next 40 years. The preacher mentioned this morning how they were so close to the land. The book of Deuteronomy in chapter 1 says it's 11 days journey from Haram into Kadesh Barnea. But 40 years later, they go into the land. You know why? Because their faith was weak. And they wouldn't trust God. And they had no strength and they had no direction. Praise will encourage you and energize your faith and help you to keep on keeping on. Amen. Jesus said, just a, a little faith, faith of a grain of mustard seed will move mountains. It's not great faith that we need. What it is, it's faith in our God who does work for us. Now, praise is just faith turned inside out. If you can praise God when you're down, then you're exercising faith because you know God's going to bring you out. And he always does. Now, the same way it is as you praise God, you're developing a prayer life, folk. And this prayer life is so important. We're to praise God in our prayers. You know, the model prayer, we, can't, we call it the Lord's Prayer. Well, the Lord's Prayer is in John 17. The model prayer is, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You see, that's, that's the way we ought to pray. Now, we, we, I've, I've been around people, that is their prayer life. No, no, God doesn't want you to pray the Lord's Prayer. It, it's a model by which we uh, develop our prayer life. But for most of us, our prayer life is a laundry list <laughs> of things that we need. Do this, do that, do the other. But prayer ought to begin with praise and it ought to close with praise. Actually, it's the bookmarks in between our prayer. Uh, now, don't miss this because uh, when, when Jesus says, as you pray, you say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's praise. And then you have the content of the prayer. And then when you come to the end of it, it says, Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And that's the closing. Begin with praise, close with praise, and you'll be surprised what God will do for us in our prayer lives. 
we make requests, and when we do, they seem so small compared to our great God. All glory belongs to Him. All, all of our actions and, and, and our praising, and we need to be verbally praising the Lord. Prayer will bolster your faith. Your, your fears will be banished. I, uh, I worked for 14 and a half years as an iron worker in the city of Chicago and thereabouts. And uh, at noon, at lunch hour, I had a habit. Uh, I used to love it when we'd be on a job and all the men would go off to the pubs and have their lunch because that meant I got a longer lunch hour, but, which was only 30 minutes, but they never came back in 30 minutes. But here's the thing about it. I, 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 two things I do almost every day when I was working. There was a, a radio newsman by the name of Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey would take the worst of news and turn it around where that it was uh, digestible. You could enjoy it, even though sometimes it was bad news. Paul Harvey was good about that. I loved him. I, every, every time that um, we, we had lunch, I would run to my car so that I could get the 12 o'clock news with Paul Harvey. The second thing that I would do is that there was a lady by the name of Ann Landers, and she was a, a, a advice guru. She would uh, have a column, and she was very famous. Her uh, uh, articles were syndicated all over America and even in different parts of the world. Uh, and she said that the number one thing that she gave more advice about than anything else was advice about fear. Fear. You know, you go... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you, you, you go to uh, the dictionary and you find a lot about fear, uh, but fear is based on feelings instead of on faith. Uh, you look it up on the internet or you go to the bookstores and, and, and get a, a catalog about all the books that are written about fear, and there's sure a whole lot of them. Let me give you the titles of just a few. Fearless Living, Fear of Dreaming, Fear of itself, fear of humiliation, fear uh, and courage, fear of falling, fear of crying, fear no evil, fear of life, and some books are out there called just fear. Uh, we live in an age of terrorism. I don't know if you've watched the news today or not, but uh, in New York City, uh, a bomb went off and uh, 29 people are uh, injured, and there's uh, another one that they don't know if he's going to live or not. And just a few blocks away at another spot, they had a pressure cooker bomb uh, set up by a telephone, and uh, fortunately they were able to disarm it before it went off, and there's no doubt about it that it was terrorism. Hazel and I were in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, when 9-11 took place. Our lives have been changed forever because of 9-11, your life as well as those in America. I remember how fear gripped the country. And I remember how that we were soon to come back to Australia and we were in the airport. Hayes and I were sitting there waiting for the announcement for us to go on the plane. We got there early being an overseas flight. And Hazel and I caught in the corner of our eye this guy over here, Muslim for sure. And he, he looked mean, and he looked anxious and suspicious. And we watched him. And my wife is a conspirator anyway. And the more she watched him, the more she thought, for sure he's up to no good. I bet you he's a terrorist. Well, after a while... I got that same concept. And so I walked over to the ticket agent and I said, now listen, you, we're, we're supposed to tell you if we see anything suspicious. And there's a fellow over there, he's got a beard. <laughs> and, and, and he's dark complex that he's uh, uh, Mideastern. And, and he's acting very, very suspicious. We think you ought to check it out. Well, it wasn't too long until a couple security people came along and they went over and, and, and they looked at him. And, and, you know, as I look back over that, as I thought about that today, you know, where is all fear based? 
Well, really, it's self-centered, and, and the foundation of, of fear is self-preservation. And, uh, you, know, you know what our thinking was? If he's going to bomb that plane, I don't want to be on it. <laughs> I mean, we, we were worried, preacher, but no, no. Now, listen, we live in, we live in an uh, egocentric world where we're looking after number one. I mean, uh, bless God, I, I, I'm going to take care of me. I love me. You know, uh, it's about everything and everything that uh, revolves around us has to do with me. When I was a kid, the number one periodical was a magazine called Life magazine. And then later on, it became People's Magazine. And then it narrowed down to Us Weekly. And then it became Self. And that's just one short of calling it me. We think about ourselves. And, and when we do, we join the world. My fear of that poor fellow, and I don't know what he was. He probably was as anxious as we are. He might have thought I was a terrorist. <laughs> uh, but, but the thing about it is, is that I focus on him because I was concerned about me. I was concerned about my wife. But the more we praise God and look to God, the less we think about ourselves. Focus on self always leads to self-destruction, folks. And we, we're weakened. And, and when we put our eyes on self and not on the Lord, we lose purpose and we lose direction. A story is told about a little girl that was with her mother and they were at somebody's house. And uh, the little girl was sitting on the bed and she looked over there and there was a mirror and it reflected a picture of Jesus on the other wall. And she looked at that and she wanted to get a better looking at it. And so she, she walks toward the mirror, but she would get in the way of the reflection. She could not see the Lord Jesus. And her mother asked her and said, well, what, what, you, what are you trying to do? And she said, I, I, I'm trying to see Jesus, but I keep getting in the way. And if we live for self, friends, we're never going to see the Lord Jesus the way that we ought to see him. Now, most of us uh, understand that foes, enemies, can be beaten. Now, sometimes the biggest enemy we have is ourselves. Verse 6, by the way, this is Bob Jones the third. Uh, life's verse it says this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles now notice verse 7 the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and deliver them somebody said if you fear God you don't have to fear man what a statement that is when God's people praise him the enemy is confused you don't, you don't gain victory because of your strength you gain victory because of God. And your faith in God gives praise in an hour of torment. All of us go through that. All of us have enemies. Even good people have enemies. Uh, Jehoshaphat, I think that's who I'm talking about, was a good king. But he had three nations that came against him. They want to destroy him and destroy Israel. And, and, and he prays, and he seeks the Lord, and he decides how to win the battle. And it wasn't with sword, and it wasn't with spears, and it wasn't with the catapult, which is, you know, that flinging thing. It was the most sophisticated weapon in his day. But he praises the Lord in an hour like that, and that gave him victory. Let me read it, and I'm almost done. I see you're getting tired. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of his holiness, and that they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, uh, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sears, everyone helped to destroy another. 
And when Judah came forward to the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies, fallen to the earth, and none escaped. <laughs> they got so confused. Uh, here, here, now look, get this picture. Uh, they're getting ready to fight a battle. And Hezekiah said, we're going to go out there and praise the Lord. Singers, you go first. You play the trumpets. You play the drums. You play this. And let's sing praises unto God. And God said, man, you're praising me. I'm going to give you victory. And so they turn on one another in the confusion. They killed one. I don't know who killed the last guy. But they're all dead. And Israel didn't lose a man. Didn't even have to fight the battle. God sent confusion. So, you know, let me just say this. And I, and I can't help but think. We need to stop thinking, woe is me, and begin to say hallelujah to the God that we serve. Look what's for right, not what is wrong, and you will praise the Lord. Now, uh, God's favor will be bestowed. The rest of the chapter, we're not going to go into because of time, but the attitude of gratitude is a secret weapon for the children of God. I know you have trouble. I know you have sorrow. All of mankind does. But we have an advantage. Now, if you've been born again, you belong to God. You're a child of God. And you praise God. Now, I'm not saying we're trying to manipulate God. Please don't think that. But there are certain things that God will do for us, just like we as parents will do for our children. If our kids gripe and groan and complain, we don't feel like doing anything for them. But when they, when, you know, they know how to butter up. I, you know, you got a married daughter. She still knows how to butter up to you. You know, and your other kids, they, they're, they're experts at it, brother. Just believe me. Uh, they're really good. But, but uh, your, your, your future will be bright if you can learn to praise God. Uh, praise will change your circumstances and sometimes even better than that your praise of God will change you and that's what God wants from us well God bless you uh, look let, let me just say this in closing God does command us to praise him uh, is he egotistical no uh, he doesn't need our praise he doesn't need us to glorify him in order for him to be glorious. But he knows you and I need to glorify him for our strength, our benefit, and our blessing. Preacher, let's sing that chorus. Amen. Psalm 34, let's sing that. We know it. Sing it all together. Ready on the count of three. One, two, three. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in thee, Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears.